There's an interesting passage in What is Cinema by André Batsin where he discusses the long take as a superior mode in comparison to, say, montage. Now, one of the reasons why he thinks the long take is superior is simply that it appears relatively late in the history of film, and so it's had time to develop and essentially evolve from earlier modes such as montage. Of course, Butzin died before the huge reemergence of montage as a cinematic practice in the late 1950s and 1960s, and he certainly hasn't seen where it's gone since then, so we cannot really know exactly what he would have said to this trend, whether he would have considered it itself an evolution out of the long take or a step back to a pr more primitive form of filmmaking, but we can guess that he probably would find it quite primitive. So the question is, why does Betsin privilege the long take? There's two reasons with a bunch of sub-reasons. One of the main reasons is that the long take is just simply more realistic. And a second reason is that the long take demands more participation from the audience than other styles. So why does the long take uh, seem more realistic to Batsin? One of the main reasons is that the long take shows a certain respect towards how time and space exist and appear to exist in reality. There's a sense for Batsin that the long take has a fixed relationship with reality, which is to say that if you were to visit the site of, a, of where a long take was shot, you could actually reenact the movements and events that you've seen in the long take. And you could do so in a way that basically reproduces what happened in the film. So for example, if you could find the location in Pulp Fiction where Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta discuss the virtues and pitfalls of massaging the feet of a crime boss, you could essentially replay that scene in reality. You could walk down the hall and take up the same amount of time that it took to enact those movements because the movements and amount of time consumed by the long take can theoretically be imitated. And this is because what happens in the long take is sort of fixed and constant. There's a sense that, th that it's, it creates a kind of sculpture through time and space that can be revisited. And I've often wondered if, if it's not Betsin's influence somewhere lurking in Gus Van Sant's decision to, to attempt remaking Hitchcock's, Hitchcock's Psycho as a shot-by-shot -shot reconstruction because there is that kind of thing of studying the shot composition and going back and reenacting it in, in at least a, a, a chronological sense. And of course, there's all kinds of problems with what uh, is going on in Van Sant's uh, remake of Psycho, which I talk about later on. Now, in terms of the long shot's relationship to reality, you can readily see that you cannot imitate in reality, at least not in any realistic way, the content of montage. So even if you were to visit the steps in Odessa, uh, it is simply not possible to replay in reality Eisenstein's Odessa step sequence in Battleship Potemkin. But of course what you can do is you can adapt the Battleship, Battleship Potemkin sequence uh, very readily in another film. And this has happened countless of times, probably most famously in Brian De Palma's The Untouchables. Now, another thing that Batsin felt about the long take is that it created more audience participation. And this, I understand, to mean that you absolutely have to pay more attention to the long take in order to understand what's happening in it. So, take Pulp Fiction again. You have multiple levels of narration going on. The two gangsters are in a narrative situation. They've come from one narrative situation in their particular past and are proceeding towards an event that's going to take place in their future. And as they're moving down that hallway, they are talking. And they're talking about a past event that we will never see in the film and they're making reference to future possibilities that we may or may not ever see, and at that point we don't know. And that's activating our imagination to think of the future of that particular cinematic structure. So, and you know, Tarantino even goes so far as to have these two characters referring to other characters that were referred to in another film that he made altogether called Reservoir Dogs. So what's really happening is that in order for the viewer to follow along in this long take, they have to be cognitively aware of multiple dimensions all at once. And depending on the level of the viewer's film literacy, they can be thinking about another film altogether. So it's almost as though the filmmaker is pushing us towards a kind of metacognition in which we're not only thinking about film, but starting to think about how we think about film as we enjoy a particular film. So this is perhaps the kind of thing Batsin is talking about when he says that the long take is superior because it allows for this kind of multi-layered uh, sensibility to accumulate inside of a film. 
I think another point here is that the long take for Betsin has greater depth in terms of composition, uh, and this again requires more participation from the viewer in order to fully experience the aesthetic and the interpretable significance of what we're seeing in the mise-en-scene. So in other words, this is another way that the long take resembles reality. There's really a high level of ambiguity in the long take because what's going on can always be interpreted in more ways than one, which is the way reality works. Now, very briefly, for but scene montage is unambiguous. It's not so filled with uh, m multiple ways to interpret it. Uh, and so this reduces, if not eliminates, audience participation. And it's really unrealistic in the way it orders time and space. It doesn't have a one-to-one -one correspondence to time or space. And this, he says, is the case even if some of the images in the montage themselves seem realistic. They just simply don't have a, have uh, the ability to develop any kind of direct connection to reality. Now, as I suggested, Betsin did not get a chance to see the evolution of the montage, and he is in fact not necessarily correct that the montage style is inferior to the long take. But I present these ideas nonetheless because I think what he says about the long take is very illuminating, and of course, that scene is extremely important in the history and development of film theory, and you can check back here because there will be more to say about that scene as we go along.